Super Mario Party releases in about a month, and Nintendo have shied away from showing a game in full. Until now, that is. Nintendo's official Japanese YouTube channel showcased a full round on the Ruins board, not avoiding any events in the process. The comedy duo Yoiko has given us the best look at the game so far. The result is something that feels closer to the more classic games than the previous couple of outings. For starters, we get a look at all of the characters that are playable. In demos for Super Mario Party at games common packs, four characters remain locked. In one shot of the footage, however, it does seem that they're given away in full. The characters in question here are Pom Pom, Dry Bones, Diddy Kong, and Donkey Kong. This might be hard to believe, but this is Diddy Kong's first appearance in a console Mario Party game. The little chimp was, before this point, only playable in Star Rush for 3DS. For Pom Pom, this is her first time in the series. She even has a one-up on her partner Boom Boom. After the characters are chosen, the players end up in a plaza of some sort. At least we think. The way the footage is cut up, you seem to move around the plaza after selecting characters. A series first, if so. In either case, we do a couple of familiar elements within the plaza. You will see Thwomp Board, River Survival, and Mariothon in the free play mode. One thing we don't directly see is the co-op mode, which retains the grid board feel of Star Rush. This could be the first option, as the lack of events on the image does line up nicely. However, the fourth option is the biggest mystery. The closest thing it reminded us of was the look of the rhythm game in Star Rush, but there aren't any minigames shown in the image. Could this be larger than before? The possibility is certainly there. At the start of the gameplay demo, a rhythm game is shown, adding credit to the idea, though this isn't something that's expanded upon. As we head into the plaza, the mode we're entering is described as the Mario Party mode, and this isn't hard to see why. The game follows the more basic structure of hopping from space to space. Next to this, it's filled to the brim with events, which are certainly worth exploring. You have your standard blue and red spaces, which will add and subtract coins as you land on them. Normally, this will be three coins, but at the end, you'll be dialed up to six. A major return is here for the happening spaces. These bring back the feeling of proper board events. Some change the location of thwomps. You have to pay three coins to normally pass, but this skips that step entirely. Another slew brings down a rock that chases you down the board. The final ones, though that's more implied, seem to bring you three chests where you play a game to earn something. What that is, we don't exactly know right now. The same goes for the versus space, which we simply don't know just yet. There's a lot more modern wrinkles as well. The lucky and bad spaces, found in the more recent Mario Party games, seem to have made a return. They weren't actively showcased, but they seem similar to their previous appearances. It'll earn or lose you coins and stars, which seems more critical as the board is smaller in size. The ally spaces make a return as well. It's here that a roulette wheel will start to spin, adding a buddy to your party. This will give you access to their dice block, which we'll get into in just a moment. Next, to the star spaces. The most strategic opportunities come from these item spaces. This gives you a chance to stay ahead of the curve. While most make a return, there are a few newcomers that are absolutely worth highlighting. One of them is the Golden Pipe. If you remember the Genie or the Flutter items from previous games, you'll be pretty aware of the effects. The Golden Pipe will place you before the star space, allowing you to start your turn right there. While the stars, being relatively cheap, they are only 10 coins, you'll find yourself taking the gamble quicker. Another important item is the Buddy Phone. This will instantly cause another character to join you, together with his or her dice block. Keep in mind though you can't choose who joins you, unlike the ally space. The final one I want to highlight is the Fly Guy Ticket. This item allows you to steal items from other players. You can choose your target, or let the computer choose for you if you're feeling fair. Speaking of picking, that's what the new Pass By board events make possible. If you have enough coins on you, you can pass by Flutter's shop and buy a specific item that you need right there and then. None of the prices are really all that harsh. A golden dash mushroom is, for example, only 5 coins, while a golden pipe will set you back 10. The second type of pass by events are Lakitu's. With his help, you'll be able to steal coins for free or get a star for 30 coins. If you like to rely on Boo and prior games, you could consider this your second home. Last but not least, we have the Paratrooper. He will carry you to an opponent's space for a measly 5 coins. Keep your friends close, but your rivals even closer. The last important factor about guiding your way through the boards are the dice rolls. These act in a very similar fashion to Star Rush on 3DS. You have the option between your standard dice or a character-specific one. The character ones come with bigger risks, but also, potentially, bigger perks. Take Bowser's die for instance. You could run the risk of losing 3 coins, but on the other hand, you could also get an 8, 9, or 10 roll. As you stack allies, your options will increase, and the chance for big rolls become feasible. Shy Guy's dice can be considered a very safe pair of hands for your party. Most of his sides contain the number 4, ensuring that you move that bit faster around the board. 
The game is about getting stars, getting a ragtag team together, and staying ahead of the curve. This becomes important as you inch closer to the final moments of the game. It is here that the scores are tallied and two additional bonus stars are given. During the gameplay demo, the stars were the most helpful allies as well as the usual happening star. These can be the ultimate make or break moments of the game, though in the gameplay demo's instance it was already decided beforehand. After the game wraps, you can see the usual graphs and stats so you can compare journeys between players. At the end of every turn, mini-games are played. This is as old as time itself, but the pure intensiveness of the mini-games shown can't be understated. Most of them make excellent use of the singular Joy-Con controls too. During the gameplay demo, 13 brand new mini-games were shown, either in part or in full. Let's run them down. This free-for-all mini-game sees you throwing colored balls into the mouths of cheap, cheap robots. In this 2 vs 2 game, you will have to make patterns with a piece of string attached to you. Within the following 1 vs 3 minigame, you'll be hitting objects in a ring. These objects, placed in a diamond format, must be hit to score points. You will need 20 total. The lone player is in the middle of the diamond, while the three are outside of it. It's all about bombs in this game. You will throw them around in a group of 10 characters. If the bomb explodes when you have it, you're out of the game. This game takes 3 rounds to complete. This free-for-all sees you pumping water to get the highest spot possible. A soccer game for teams of two. Just like the bomb game, more CPU players are added. It's speaking of bombs, in this 1 vs 3 game, you have to try and land bombs in your opponent's field. Each player carries a racket, but the one for the solo player is extremely large. There's this adorable free-for-all game where you have to grab pancakes and bring them to your plate. Normal ones will net you 1 point, while star-crested ones will grant you 3. Another free-for-all, but this time it's all about banana peels. You have to get yourself through a maze filled with them and make your way to the middle. This is where a big stack of fruit awaits the winner. More fruit in this 2 vs 2 game, as you move around a cursor and line up fruit icons on the playing field. In the last team-based minigame, 2 vs 2 again, Joy-Con be moved into position while two blocks fit on top of each other. This needs to be done three times to win. More Joy-Con motion controls in this free-for-all game. You have to move the Joy-Con up and down to get the character into focus. Once again, this needs to be done three times. Depending on your ranking, you'll get 5, 3, 1, or 0 points per round. Finally, in the following free-for-all game, you'll have to press L or R to climb yourself up to the goal. While these are all the major things we wanted to point out, there are a few more things worth mentioning. The animations for characters are some of the best we've seen in the series. Everything from a high five to the reactions to somebody guessing a star, it is quite an incredible display of detail. At the end of the video, next to the rhythm game, they're teasing a look at a dedicated 2 vs 2 mode in Super Mario Party. This image showcases a baseball game, which gives us a weird Wii Party U vibe. And that's all we have to say about Super Mario Party. It's shaping up to be a surprisingly fun game that'll make old Mario Party fans happy. If the game turns a leaf for the series, that remains to be seen of course, but there is a solid hope behind it. The minigames look varied, and the various ways to play make for a unique package. In either case, it'll be interesting to see what Nintendo showcases in the upcoming gameplay demos. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and of course be sure to subscribe to Game Explain for a lot more on Super Mario Party, and other things gaming too. Until next time, bye!